today we're going to talk a little about soil testing, especially with regards to grid versus zone testing and also what size of grid or zone should you use. We do get questions about this all the time, especially on Ag PhD Radio. People say, well, which is the best way for me to do this? The best way is the way that you can manage. So let's say that you've got variable rate application technology that you can spread to one acre grids. Then I'd pull one acre grids and see what kind of variance is out in your field. When we look at pH, for example, there is such a difference in some of our fields that from one grid point to the next, we may need some lime and we don't need some lime, just the next point over. By sampling in smaller grids, we've got the opportunity to try to manage it well. Here's the thing. The more variance you have, the smaller your grid needs to be. Let's say you've been managing on five acre grids for the last 10 years. I don't have any problem with that, but what I would suggest to you is at least once, just go down to one acre grids. What you will probably find is now this gives you the opportunity to even things out over the field, and once you even things out, well now you actually could go back to two and a half acre grids or maybe even five acre grids, that's fine. But it's just that one application, that one time where you have the opportunity to get those things straightened out on your farm, go to the small grids at least once. All right, so that's one extreme. Let's look at the other. How about one sample per field? Frankly, the data is worthless. You're going to be over applying fertilizer in half the field and under applying fertilizer on the other half because you're applying towards an average and there's going to be variance out in your field. Now I'll look at it this way. If your yield monitor data says I had 100 bushel wheat across my entire field, there was never any variance. Well, you might be able to get by with one sample for the whole field, but if you saw, oh, I had 60 bushel wheat here and 120 bushel wheat there, or I had 100 bushel corn here and 300 bushel corn there, you've got tremendous variance out there and you need to go to some smaller grids. All right, now we talk about zones. A lot of people like zones and I'm fine with zones, that's okay. But here's what I want you to think about. Are your zones accurate? You may say, well, I'm doing different soil types. Okay, I, I'm not a believer in testing by soil type. And also, I'm not a believer by testing by varus cart either. This is the reason why. Just think about this. All the things that you're going to measure in that soil test, you got roughly 20 things. You got all the micronutrients, all the secondary nutrients, all the major nutrients, you got soil pH, you got cation exchange capacity, you got base saturation, you got all these things. If it's a varus cart, if it's a soil type, and you're, you're using it to say, well, the varus cart said this area was all the same. Does that mean every single one of those 20 things is the same? Not a chance in the world. So if you want to use zones, fine. But at least once, split the zones up into something around one acre. So don't take big zones. I hate big zones, just like Darren said, with composite sampling. The data is pretty worthless. So at least one time, see what you have for actual variance, then use variable rate fertility to fix not just P and K, but to fix all the things that need to be fixed. Because you'll see variance in everything from pH to the micronutrients. We want to try to even out the field as much as possible. Then you can apply one thing across most of the field. This information that we're giving you works everywhere in every soil on the earth. If you say, well, in my area, they do it a little bit different, that doesn't make it right. That just means, well, we're using the practice we used 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. You can manage things a little more intensely on your farm, and you should see results. Now, in different soil types, like say, for example, you have very sandy, light, beach sand kind of soil, Yes, you're going to manage things a little bit differently than you are with very heavy, deep clays. Or if you're in a high moisture area, you may do your fertilizer application a little different than in a low moisture area. But you still need to start with good soil sample data to be able to determine what the best program is to give you the best return on investment on your farm. One last thing I want to leave you with is how to soil sample. Here's how you soil sample. You pick GPS points, whether it's a grid or a zone, whether it's a big grid or a small grid, a big zone or a small zone, I don't care. You select GPS points, you drive to that GPS point, you get out of your vehicle, whatever the vehicle is, you take two or three cores on each side of the vehicle, all four sides, you throw everything together in a sample bag, done. 
And the reason why you want to go with GPS points is that's repeatable. So now you can come back next year. You can come back five years from now. You can come back 50 years from now. This gives you the opportunity to truly trace how you're doing over a period of time. Don't randomly sample across your zones or your grids. That's never going to work. You're never going to have repeatability. Pick GPS points. That's absolutely 100% the way to go. Well, one of the things that you may see out in your field while you're out soil sampling is this week's Weed of the Week. Can you identify it?